Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. We had uh, obviously a, a, a good weekend. Um, being able to have a four quarter battle and get a win. Obviously it wasn't perfect and, and we're still uh, working out uh, a lot of issues, a lot of mistakes and stuff, but uh, the guys uh, um, are still buying in. They're believing the biggest thing is we were able to finish the game, which was obviously so important for us in the fourth quarter to be able to get a stop, force a punt, even though um, we had to start at a five, we got a big drive, uh, converted a fourth and one, converted a third and nine, we're able to get a score and then even after giving up a couple of plays, the defense was able to make a couple of plays with some hits on the quarterback and um, be able to stop the drive. And so uh, obviously pleased with how we finished the game. And, and uh, as we talked to the players yesterday, we still have a ton of work to do to continue to get better. And uh, obviously it just it, it, it's a little bit better to do that when you come off a win. So um, excited about the, the big challenge we have this weekend. I'm sure you're only looking at this year's Oklahoma team, but um, I guess how impressive or unique is it to have to start over quarterback three straight years and be as effective as they have been doing? Yeah, it, it's really impressive. And, and you look at where, where Jalen Hurts is at this year because he wasn't in the system very long, seeing what he's been able to do um, running that offense. And it's a phenomenal offense as it is, but he's running it at, at a really high level. And obviously uh, that's the biggest challenge is he can beat you in so many different ways. With Malik Knowles, will he be able to play the whole game? Well, we'll find out. Obviously, we just had a, a short practice yesterday. Today, um, we'll see if he's medically cleared to have a, a, a normal day or normal week. That, that's the biggest thing. He didn't have a normal week of practice. And if he had a normal week of practice, he'd be able to play more. And so I'll, I'll probably know more uh, by the end of the day, Wednesday. It seemed like things did open up offensively when he was in there. Did you notice that? On you know, uh, potentially, you know, that, that they could have. Uh, he, made a, he made a big play. Uh, obviously down the seam when we had a, a long third down play. But, uh, um, yeah, every, everybody's got to find a way to continue to contribute. But, um, you know, we're, we were hopeful to get a healthy Malik back. You'd also previously mentioned maybe – we're knocking on wood. Jordan would be back. Tonight, I think they're going to do some testing on him on Wednesday afternoon. So then we'll we'll learn more on Wednesday of Jordan. Okay. With the success that Skyler had running the ball, is that something you'd like to incorporate a little bit more in the offense? Um, yeah, but you still need to be smart about how many carries. You know, if you can keep that around 8 to 12, we're better. I don't want to get it to where he's running 15 to 18 times. But obviously, to help us out, we, we need him to be able to be a viable threat running the football. Uh, and so we'll continue to, to look at it on a, on a week-to-week game plan. And as far as just the <clears throat> more traditional run game, just after watching it on film, what are your thoughts? Uh, we were better with some of our inside run game than we were our perimeter run game. That's where we struggled still. We didn't have the negative plays, which is positive. We didn't have as many of those uh, negative plays on the edge. Uh, but we still, um, you know, if we're going to run perimeter run, we have to block better on the perimeter. And that's everybody. That's tight ends, fullbacks, O-line, um, wide receivers. Um, but some of the inside run, especially some of our uh, zone stuff off of jet action, uh, I, I thought was, was at least promising. If I'm right, I think this is the first game where maybe Josh Rivas played more snaps than, than Evan Curl. Um, how did he do on Saturday? He, uh, in general? Yeah, we're trying to keep pushing Rivas. Uh, obviously, he's our sixth in, in getting time. I still think Evan's doing a really good job. You know, we'd like to be able to keep both those two guys in and maybe spell a tackle and move um, Tyler Mitchell outside to tackle just so we can spell more guys. That's something that, uh, um, you know, the depth is, is where we're continuing to try to grow and get better there. We've got Katori and Christian that are getting better. They're just not better than what Nick and Scott are right now. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll continue to, to give him opportunities, Rebus, because he is playing a, a, at a high level. You said in the past, you, you know, you're, you're, a points, you're a points guy. Yeah. Look at the points. What kind of pride do you take just when everything is said and done, K-State's number one in the Big 12 in scoring defense, and what's it maybe say about the defense that this despite any faults it might have, that it's able to hold the teams off the score. Yeah, for starters, I give the players credit. They play really hard. And that's a that's a testament to, to those guys' um, work ethic, desire, resolve to play 
friggin' hard for 60 minutes, and that's that's cool to see. All that being said, we're not, we're not playing where we need to be able to play defensively, uh, whether it's misfits, um, uh, missing a tackle, uh, having a ball in our hands, or, or a potential knocking away and, 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 and receiver coming up with it. That's the, the thing that we talked about to the guys yesterday on defense. Yeah, we're doing some really good things, and let's make sure we emphasize those because you're right, we're holding people out of the end zone. But think how much better we could be if we could eliminate half the missed tackles we have. And, and you know, we're, we're kind of pounding it into them until they're blue in the face, but we have to continue to improve upon that. We'll do some different things this week with some tackle circuits and some things just to continue to emphasize it because we have to be better there. On the, on the other side, Oklahoma's defense is much improved from, from a year ago. What makes them so physical and so good? And what's their mentality like this season in your opinion? Well, I, I don't know what it was in the past, uh, but they just play really, really fast. They, I think, have simplified things just in talking to like Coach Klein and some of the guys that have been around, uh, that they're a lot simpler in what they're doing. They're playing things really fast. Uh, they get off blocks. You're just not sustaining blocks on those guys, which is um, you know, uh, the sign of a great defense. And I think they're a really good tackling team, which is another sign, because in this game of college football right now, it's all about plays in space and it doesn't matter who they're playing you see people get the ball in space against them uh, and there's no yards after contact well that that's a sign of an exceptional team that understands where they fit within the defense and then is really efficient about being able to tackle people with him what is the process of deciding what to stop Take away first, whether it's Lamb or Jalen Hurts, so there's so many different options for uh, you, you hit it on the head. Um, where you pick your poison a little bit. Um, I think we have to be at least able to slow down some of the run game. But which run game are you going to slow down? You're going to slow down the quarterback run. You're going to slow down the, the, the running backs, the jet action, all that stuff. Um, I think it's our ability to show some different looks, um, show base, show some pressures, um, be able to tackle in space uh, and try to eliminate some of the explosive run plays. And, and in the passing game, yeah, I mean, if you do a great job trying to stop the run, well, they're going to have time to throw the football, and that's that's the next scary part. And so uh, for us, it, it has to be trying to slow down, uh, slow down the run game first. Jonathan Alexander obviously had that really big pump block there. Do you feel like maybe he might find some more time in the defense, or is he still working to figure it all out? Yeah, we probably should have played him a little bit more on defense. Just in Coach Klanderman and I talking, uh, maybe we didn't realize how the game flow was going, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say. Um, but no, that was huge for him to make that play. And the one before, the, the punt before, Jonathan kind of hesitated just a second, and the punter was able to get it off. And we came and, and talked about it on the sideline and said, Jonathan, just come hard. You, you, you're going to be the clean guy. Um, but still came in and made the play. That was that was a, obviously a huge play for us. Uh, I'm pleased with Jonathan. Uh, we, we probably need to get him more snaps on defense, to be honest with you. And I know it's early in the week, probably tough to feel it out. Yeah. Does a game like this have any any resemblance at all to kind of those uh, David versus Goliath type games you had at North Dakota State? Um, we don't. We haven't talked about that. We, we probably won't mention it. I think you can flip on the film and the guys see how talented this team is that we're playing in all phases, offense, defense, and teams. Uh, and I hope it lends us to believe, hey, we've got to keep our we got to keep our focus every snap and, and make sure that uh, that we do our job and detail our work every snap because they have potential to make a big play. You know, whether it's a tackle for a loss, a sack, or a big play on offense at, at any given time. So uh, every play is going to really matter. Looks like Jerome McPherson left the game on Saturday. Is he going to be able to go? Uh, he didn't practice yesterday. We're, we're hopeful it's um, it's a knee injury, but not a significant knee injury. Uh, and, and so, what's significant? Well, there's no surgery involved, so I think it's going to be more of a day-to-day -day basis. And um, I'm glad you brought him up because I thought Jonathan Durham played a really nice football game for a guy that is a is a senior that uh, um, has been a part of the game plan and been in the mix. J obviously, J Max played more, uh, but I thought JD stepped up in a critical time. And that's what we need is, is guys that uh, he was, he was hey, this is my opportunity. I'm going to go make some plays. And I was really pleased. It made us feel more comfortable as a defense that, uh, you, know, you know, J.D.'s got to be in the mix more. 
the midway point of the season, what would you say has impressed you most about your new team and what are you still working on? Uh, how hard they play, the resolve, the fact that they stay together. Our practices are really good, especially during the two-game two game losing streak and you throw in the open week. Uh, just that they that they know it's a process, that they know they're continuing to get better and better. Um, and, and we see it, even though it may not show up uh, every Saturday, and I wish it would, just like you guys all wish it would show up every Saturday. I can see us getting better. You know, The two things that we still have to continue to work on is finding a way to be more more consistent rushing the football and tackling on defense. Those are the two components that, you know, are, are going to be the, the, the end all for us uh, as we move on through the season. I know we're getting better at, at running the football. We, we've shown some of that, but we, we've got to keep finding out what's our niche. Are, are we going to be more of a gap scheme team, zone scheme team? And, and then tackling, it's just same thing, working on leverage, working on fits and working on wrapping up. On TCU's fourth down play at the end of the game, uh, you show pressure with Daquan, drop him in the coverage. Um, in what ways does, it, does disguising coverage and changing looks uh, benefit you defensively? Well, we were... <laughs> We were fortunate there because we had some time. I don't know if there was, I can't remember if there was a timeout or not, but it wasn't a quick snap. You know, it wasn't going on for them in a, in a hurry up situation. So we were able to hold our look and then pressure off the edge uh, with Wyatt um, to try to confuse the confuse the look. Uh, we, we showed a, uh, a two deep look and rolled to a single high look, which you hope makes that quarterback just hold the ball just for a split second to say, okay, I got to go to my next read. And then that's where, you know, you have a guy like Wyatt that was able to dip, get the edge, um, beat the guy and have that extra split second to be able to get the hit on the quarterback. And, you know, we were right there close. Had he gotten the ball off, it would have been a bang, bang play on the on the fourth and 11. Uh, but obviously when he when he got the hit on the on the QB, ball, ball came fluttering out. So just being able to make sure we hold that ball a little bit longer for the uh, quarterback. It seems like scoring by spread offenses has declined. The defenses have got them in check. Well, more, but <laughs> OU is continuing to yeah. juggernaut. What do you see from them that just can, they continue to roll right along? Yeah, I, I would say the defenses have improved across the landscape of college football, and then obviously just watching what I watch in the in the Big Twelve, but. What Oklahoma is doing is is unbelievable. What they're doing against everybody and the success they're having, the, the efficiency with which they're playing with, and the amount of explosive plays. When you turn on the explosive play tape, it just goes and goes and goes uh, because they have a tremendous scheme, guys that understand the scheme, and then the number one thing is execution, and they're executing it really, really well. Coach, as, as, a, as a coach and as a motivator of young men, do you stand in front of them yesterday and outline what they can do, the opportunity before them, and uh, you know the goals for the yep. team this week, even though it is you know a top ten team? Yeah, I, I don't really believe in doing it that way because I learned a long time ago: be careful about overemphasizing one team than another. Okay. Because if you do that. And man, we're going to, this is our Super Bowl. We got to get it done. Then what do you do next week? What do you do the following week? No different than if we were playing Nickel State. You know, that's the next game on the schedule. Let's let's attack this week. You guys can see the film. You can see what we're doing. But I, I, I'm always careful about saying, boy, this is a must win, or this is something. Man, this all look at the, the look at what's on us today. This is everything. So what do you do the next week? And I just think you get into those 12 one-week seasons, and this is the next one on the docket. And 